75%! Man, these relic races make the percentage go up really fast, because I think the relics and the trophies and all that are worth the same amount. We're halfway done. We're done there. We're done in there. Excuse me, Wall, I'm trying to drive here. I am walking here! What's up, my pilots? Angry Poncho here, and we are back playing Crashing Racing. This episode, we're going to continue getting the relics. Uh, this one's uh, Dragon Mines. It's the boss track for World 3, which we're kind of just hopping around. We, we did World 1, and now we're doing World 3, and we've already done one of the tracks from this area, so... I figure let's just hop right in. I, I am in an awful mood right now. I am annoyed. Oh, it's way late. Oh, well. You want to know why I'm annoyed? Thanks for asking. I, I, I just watched the season finale of Dexter. Not... I won't say which season, because I don't want to give any information to people who might actually decide to watch the show someday, uh, which I heartily encourage. Great show. But man, the end of this season finale sucked! It just... it looked like they were gonna... Oh, I should not have gone around again. Oh, so I'm trying to get those boxes. Now I feel like an idiot. There we go. I wonder if that was worth nine seconds. <laughs> Probably not. Oh. Anyway, it looked like they were going to have a happy ending, and then they had a very much not happy ending, which was sincerely annoying. Just kind of kind of sucked, to be honest. Uh, I like shows to have happy endings. I guess Dexter's not a show that really lends itself to those, but you know. Anyway, that's all I'll say about it, because, man, just, what a great show, but that really sucks the way they ended that season. Kind of blows. Oh, well. It's not going to stop me from watching the rest of the seasons, mostly because I, I, I want to now. I want to know. I mean, I guess the finale did its job really well because now I'm really interested in finding out how the hell they're going to recover from this in the next season. It seems like it might be difficult to make the plot make sense, but I won't say any more than that. I don't want to spoil it. Oh man! So how is everybody's day today? It's a Wednesday, which uh, for most people is the middle of the week, but for me, this week at least. Oh, I wanted to try and get both of those boxes. That was a fool's errand. For me, it was the second day of the week because I had Monday off, which was very nice. Uh, I like having a day off every now and then. Three-day weekends are just so great. Okay, this is a good timing. I'm going to go behind this cart. I won't get run over by the next one if I'm quick enough. Oh, and I went in the pit. Right in the pit. And it put me back over here. That sucks. Wow. Doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I've gotten so many of the boxes, I'm going to finish the race with plenty of time to spare. It just kind of sucks that I <laughs> fell off. I was doing so well. I've got all but three boxes. I missed. Okay, so there's one out. Okay, there's one here. One to the left there. I don't know how they expect you to get that. Unless we have a shortcut back there that lets you come around and come up the ramp and get this one. Otherwise, I don't see any way you could get it. Yes, I'm watching the time. I'm going to make it. Yeah, so, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so I had Monday off, which is wonderful. Three-day weekends are just a whole other thing, you know? It's like, uh, when I go on a long vacation, it's almost too much. For example, when I had a whole week off, I, or I took the whole week off for Thanksgiving, I enjoyed spending time with my family, and I had a lot of fun being able to go to Florida and take a road trip. I don't normally have time to do that, but, uh... Near the end of the trip, it was like, okay, I've had enough vacation, now it's time to go back to work. I guess it's just, I like change, so it's nice to have work and then vacation, work and then vacation, work and then vacation, rather than long stretches of each. And with 3D weekends, it's just like, it's just enough vacation that it feels like a vacation, feels like a day off. Great. You earned a relic. But it's not so much vacation that, like, for example, it's a pain when you come back to work because you're behind on everything. And, you know, all this stuff's been happening without you. Which way do I want to go next? Let's go this way. Pick up this world, and then we'll zoom back into world two. On our way back south. How's that sound? Sound good to you? I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. So, uh, how'd you guys like yesterday's Ape Escape episode? <laughs> that was, uh... <laughs> that ending. I actually stopped recording after that. I was like, okay, that's a great place to end the episode, even though it's a, you know, kind of a... <laughs> It was funny, I guess. 
There we go. I'm gonna go right into the seal. Oh! <laughs> Freaking seals. That three wasn't even hard to get. Of course, I may have missed the next boxes. Oh well. All these tracks that have options of where you can go left or right and it takes you to the same end point in the relic races, they're going to have boxes along both paths, so don't take the same path every time. I mean, you want to get the boxes. They're pretty, they're pretty much... I think for some of the tracks, you could probably, if you were really fast or if you did use shortcuts, you could get to the... probably get this, the uh, Sapphire Relic without getting any of the boxes. That'd be a good challenge, actually. Try and get all the Sapphire Relics without using any of the time-saving boxes. I might not make this. Oh, that was close! Wow! That was, I think, right on the border of how much speed you have to have to make that jump, and I just barely got it. Let's talk about video games again. I, uh, I've been playing Fable 2 a lot recently. Uh, I haven't... I, I only beat Fable 2 one time. Oh, I had enough speed for that box, and I totally blew it. Oh well. Let's see if I can get this one. Oh, no! I'm a failure. Anyway, uh, one of the reasons that I, uh, I, I bought Fable 2 back in the day was because I so enjoyed... Oh, I almost had that. That was really close. I so enjoyed the first Fable. It's still one of my favorite games. and I, I still need to do a, a, a Will User playthrough because every time I played that game as a kid, I was always a swordsman. Every single time I played that game. I would just... Sometimes I would do light swordsman, sometimes I would do heavy. That was the only variation. But I always did swordsman, and it's like, oh man. And then, near the end of my lifespan playing that game before I kind of, I don't know, moved on to other things, I did one run where I was uh, an archer instead, but I never did a will user run, and it's such a shame because the, the will in, in that game is so cool. You get that one spell that makes you, it's like a skin shield, makes you invincible for as long as you have mana left, and it doesn't even use up your mana very fast. Pretty freaking great if you ask me. One of the best spells in the game, and that's how all the speedrunners and things get through the game really quickly. No! Oh, I'm missing those boxes that are supposed to be easy. Dang. Anyway. Yeah, so I really enjoyed the first Fable, and so I figured, hey, I'll probably enjoy the second Fable. If not as much, then close to as much, as is usually the, the pattern for sequels. They're good, but not as good. Or they're just plain bad. <laughs> But they're never as good as the original. I think that's kind of an established fact. There are only a few series that are of exceptions to that rule, and I feel like I've talked about this before, so I'll get back to the point. Uh, which is, I've been playing Fable 2, and it's, it's it's so different than the first Fable. I don't even... It's just... Oh, three times in one race! Wow, I don't know if I've ever done that on this track. That's really good. I had to stop and focus for a second there. Yeah, so it's a really fun game. And I'm wondering now why, as a kid, I only ever played it the one time. I beat it one time, and of course it was as a swordsman, so it was the same kind of stuff I'd always done in the first Fable. I don't know. Oh, I got the gold! By like 10 seconds. Wow, the platinum must be really fast. They're more than 10 seconds apart. Wow, okay. Anyway. Yeah, so all, all I can think of is maybe it was just my age. Maybe when the second Fable come out, or came out, bleh, I I was older, and so I only played it the one time before I kind of grew out of it and moved on to other games. Because I played a lot of R RPGs when I was a teenager, I didn't play... I guess Fable 2 is an RPG. Anyway, I don't know why I only ever played it once. And now playing through the game a second time, I have only f like vague memories of, of the game. And so it's uh, it's weird, because it's a game from my childhood. Great. You are a relic. But... I don't know it like the back of my hand, like I do with all the other games from my childhood. So it's, it's just it's, it's an interesting thing for me, and I've probably bored you to death talking about it. One more level, and then we're done with World 3. Blizzard Bluff! Blizzard Bluff! Uh, anyway. But yeah, I'm, you know what I like about the second Fable? That the first Fable doesn't have? A dog. You can have a dog. That's actually, you're kind of required to have a dog. It follows you around, and there's no way to get rid of it. Which doesn't bother me at all. I love it. I named my dog Buddy. Because I, I always say, Hey, Buddy. <laughs> and I figured, hey, that's a great name for my dog. Why the hell not? 
Because now whenever he barks to show me where treasure is and stuff, I just go, Hey, buddy! <laughs> I have memes, even when I play by myself. Isn't it ridiculous? Oh, I got the blocks! It was totally worth it! I didn't get the second box, so I'll have to try that again on the next lap. I could probably beat this race falling in that pit three times. Jeez, that was weird. Did you hear the echoes in that tunnel? It did the same thing that it does in the usual races where your your, your engine sort of gets an echo. But then it, it also sounded kind of like metal banging together or something. I don't know what that was. I'm gonna go hard right and get that box and it's the three. Oh, I barely jumped in time. I almost just drove right off. That would have been pretty pathetic. Gotta go low to get that one. Oh, I lost way too much speed sliding on the ice before I tried that jump. Oh, well. I had, to, I had the speed when I landed, but then I lost it. Yeah, it sounds like if you jump while you're in that tunnel, it makes a really weird noise. I'm gonna go high to get that three. Triple power slide out of the corner. Totally worth it to go up there for that three. And off the track for that two. Oh, I got both of those. Perfect. Just what I need. Just what I wanted. Uh, but I was gonna say needed because that's what Mario says. Anyway, did I ever finish what I was saying about the dog? Yeah. Hey, buddy. All that stuff. I have memes even when I play by myself. It's just ridiculous. I don't. Making LPs. I'm not gonna go for it this time. Has forever changed the way that I enjoy video games. I've, so I've talked about this once in a vlog. Oh, there's a box up there. I didn't even notice that one until the third lap. I talked about this in a, in a vlog once. But I haven't really mentioned it in these videos before, I don't think. Uh, it's just, it's kind of strange, because I've played video games all my life, and I've never had that compulsion to do commentary or to have memes and just funny stuff that makes me laugh. Uh, but now that I've done LPs for, oh my god, it's been four years now, hasn't it? Wow, it's been actually, yeah, as of a couple of months ago, it's been like four years that I've been making these videos. That's crazy. Wow, that's nuts. I've done so many games now. I'm like a veteran. Sweet. I didn't even realize that. And it's amazing. I still only have seven and a half thousand subscribers. But hey, I love you guys. And I, I wouldn't have it any other way, to be honest. Well, unless I had like 50 million and I could quit my job, that would be nice. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't want to have like 50,000. Because then it's like you get, you get enough people on your channel that you start, you start having haters. And, uh, you know, people start prying into your personal shit, which is kind of a moot point now that I have a vlog channel, which I never update, so I guess it doesn't really make that much of a difference. I'm running into the walls. Come on! Come on! There we go. And then, when you, when you have that many subscribers, the first comment... This is not a place I want to go. That's not even a regular track. The first comment in every video is first, and that just sucks. Whereas, with you guys, with the pilots, the first comment is, well, like, 80% of the time, a real comment. Which is freaking great! Which, I mean, that never happens for the big YouTubers. In fact, I don't even think that their comment sections are worth looking at. It's kind of a, a sort of an accepted fact, isn't it, on the internet, that the YouTube comment section is a great place to go if you're looking for people arguing about stupid things and insulting each other. Just saying dumb stuff and, you know, looking like fools, basically is that you can't... <laughs> I think XKCD's actually had comics about that. Uh, where the... Uh, if the internet could, f could fix YouTube comments to, so that it only allowed helpful uh, on-topic comments, it would be like the ultimate spam filter. Anyway, that is not exactly what that comic said, because it wasn't funny at all, which the comic is funny. Actually, I take that back. XKCD is funny like a third of the time now, and then a third of the time it's really big pictures he draws, which, based on the advertisements that have been on the site lately, I'm thinking might have, you know, some built-in value as Christmas gifts and other things you can sell. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's cool when you have enough people on your, on your comic or whatever your creative medium is that you can make a living off of it. It just seems kind of, uh, I don't know. I think there's a contract between the viewer of content and the creator of content. Got it. And I think that if the viewer 
for example, pays for the content, then the creator is obligated to provide what they said they were going to provide. Is there a box in the bushes over here? This was a big, big mistake. Big mistake! I'm a fool! Anyway, so yeah, if you pay for something and it's not what you thought, like if you saw a preview for a movie and then you went to see that movie and it was nothing like the preview, you would feel misled and you would be upset with the people who made the movie, or at least with the people who made the preview, because you paid for content and you didn't get what you thought you were going to get or what, what you wanted to get. Or like if you saw a movie and you loved it and then you went to see the sequel and it was like a different director and it was nothing at all the same and you were sad because it wasn't what you had, what you had enjoyed the first time. All, that, all the magic was gone, you know? Like if my channel suddenly just switched gears and I, I started doing makeup tutorials and every video was just makeup tuto tutorials, I think a lot of people would unsubscribe, don't you? I mean, besides the fact that I don't wear makeup, I think that people come to this channel looking for Let's Plays, and if they came here and found something else, they would be disappointed. And that's why I think that when you make a webcomic that is supposed to be like... Whatever kind of webcomic it is, it can be astute comments about video games, which is probably maybe a third to a half of all webcomics. Uh, or it can be just humor, or it can be a character piece where it's like a drama. You get to know the characters, and it's the uh, just slight humor in each in each comic. Whatever it is, if you suddenly go from one of those to something else, people aren't gonna like it. Even if your new content is good, it's not gonna be what people come to come to get. You know, it's like if you went into a pizza parlor and all they had was really good German food. You'd be confused, and you'd enjoy the German food, but you probably wouldn't come back to that pizza parlor, you know? I have made so many metaphors in this video. Anyway, but that's that's one of the reasons that I kind of go, eh, when I see people making tons of money on a webcomic, I don't begrudge them for their success. I mean, I make money off of these videos. I mean, obviously it's not, <laughs> not that much, because like, I don't have a you know, a new car or anything, but or uh, I can't quit my job like some of the huge YouTubers have done. Is this shortcut open all the time? Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, that's nuts. I'm probably going to have to go around the long way, though, to get some of the uh, the boxes and things. Actually, it might not be worth it. If I can just go with a shortcut every time, saving the time might be worth more than getting the boxes. Anyway, so when I, that's why I kind of go, eh, when I see a webcomic uh, artist living off of his webcomic. Because on one hand, I'm really pleased for them, because that's sort of the, the dream, isn't it? To be able to find something that you love to do, that you're good at, and then that's a creative art form that people will pay you to do. That's like the artist's dream. And although my videos, most people probably wouldn't consider them art, I, I try and look at them from that standpoint on occasion, because I think that's what they are to some degree. Okay, I'm going to zigzag all over this freaking track and give myself some boxes. Oh, there's a three down there on the, uh, on the ground. Yeah, it was definitely worth it going through there, probably just the one time. Anyway, but then on the other hand, while I'm also happy for the, the artist who's now living off of his art, I'm also just a, a little bit dis... not disappointed, no, it's sort of concerned. Because... Although they're going to live off of it, that, that sort of changes the relationship between the artist and his art. Once you're getting paid for it, it becomes your job. And then, it's not your art anymore. It has to always be your art first, and your job second. You know, it's just art that people happen to want to pay you for. Not like, you get up in the morning and think, I have to draw a comic today, or I won't be able to pay the bills this month, you know, or something like that. It's just, then all of a sudden the magic is gone, and it's just nothing. It's just rote garbage. You just, you give in to the fan service and the nonsense, and you become a really popular YouTube channel. <laughs> That's what it all comes around to. Uh, so yeah, I love having exactly the amount of subscribers I have. It's just where I want to be. And I think that's enough for this episode of Let's Play Crash Team Racing. Next time around, we are going to finish up the other two tracks in World 2, and then go on to do the uh, Relic Races in World 4. And then we will have a final climactic race for the fate of the entire planet! 
thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.